Casey. It's 5 a.m. on Tuesday, August 7th. You're right here in the command post in Merlin, Oregon for First Facts Live at 5. Glad you could join us. I want to give you a quick update on the Taylor Creek fire. The acreage is up 1,400 acres to 41,103. Containment stays at 38%. We have 1,520 personnel here with us today. And the evacuation level on the Pickett Creek Road area, that entire area that was a level two, got downgraded to a level one yesterday. Okay, here's the big news today. Chris Schulte's Pacific Northwest Type 1 team, the team that I'm on right here, in Unifying Command with the Oregon State Fire Marshal's Office, is signing a delegation of authority at 6 a.m. this morning to assume command of the Klondike Fire. Now, yesterday afternoon in um, Selma, the Rocky Mountain Incident Commander Mike Gokachia spoke to the 140 residents who gathered in Selma last night for the community briefing and explained the situation. The Rocky Mountain team is going to head down and focus entirely on the Natchez fire and the Pacific Northwest team too that's already here and that's already been helping the Klondike fire is going to assume command of it today. They're going to remain two separate fires. The goal is to contain both separately and we'll give you a lot more information about that because today is a transition day. Okay, so this is not a complex. Uh, it's one fire being managed in the south and one fire being managed in the north and we're gonna do everything we can to keep them separate. Every fire manager and every firefighter here shares the exact same goal, regardless of the agency, the logo, or the truck where you drive. That is to protect your homes, your businesses, your property, and your communities up and down the corridor. We also know that there's values at risk up on the mountain, the timber values, the recreation values, but the primary goal that we all share 100% is for you to know that we're here to protect your homes, your community, and your businesses. The Illinois Valley Fire Chief, Dennis Hope last night, opened up the meeting by, yeah, with a very confident statement. You can see that meeting, it's online at the Klondike Fire page. We'll post it here this morning on the Taylor Creek page. And he said, I've been tied in with this group the whole time. They're gonna keep that fire up in the mountain and I'm confident that they will. So thanks Dennis Hope, Chief Hope for that, uh, Nice opening last night. The operations chief, Brent Olson, from the outgoing Rock Mountain team, described how this buffer along the, the Forest Service 25 road is getting deeper. That is the exact buffer that is gonna protect Wonder, Wilderville, the Redwood Highway, and Selma. As it gets deeper, I know some folks were concerned about not seeing a lot of containment on the Klondike fire over the last couple weeks. This is a non-traditional fire. What is a traditional fire these days? We have extreme drought, we have extreme dry fuels, and so you can't just say that this is the only thing that's in play for 5%. As this buffer gets deeper, and Brent Olson explained it very well last night, that gives us a high confidence that as we deepen that more, and as our fire resources come and bolster this, that we're giving a nice protection, we're taking the energy out of what could have jumped the line and gotten into these communities and these values at risk. This is what we're here to protect. There's some uncertainty about how we're gonna tie all this together, but we know one thing, we're absolutely 100% committed to making sure that your homes, businesses, and properties are safe. On that note, I want to introduce right now from the Oregon State Fires Marshal's Office, my special guest today. His name is Damon Simmons, and he's the information officer who will explain from the Structure Protection Group side how this works. Thanks, Thanks for having me, Kale. So uh, as, we, as we strengthen this line that Kale talked about here, to keep the fire from being able to push this direction. Uh, we're gonna bring in uh, fire marshal resources from Taylor Creek, and we're gonna bring in some resources from Klondike, and those are gonna be managed by the state fire marshal. And their mission is going to be structure prep and protection in this area to make sure that if any of this fire moves out of here, we're ready for it. And I'm told by our ops people that if the fire does move out of this area, it's gonna do it in fingers, it's gonna do it in small pieces. So we should have the resources that we need to handle it if that happens. And now I'll hand it back to Kale. Great, thanks Damon. Okay, so what all this means. Again, we're gonna be more efficient. For example, this morning I went to go download the IR map for the Klondike fire to post it up on our page for you. It's not in the same place that our fire is. When the GIS team, the mapping team is all in one unit, it'll be much more efficient for me. I can post both maps at the same time. We're gonna increase firefighter safety. We're not gonna to have to negotiate how, who's using which safety zone or which radio channel between two teams. 
It's gonna become a lot easier for our firefighters. They like having one plan because they want to do their job. They want to serve you. The resource distribution. All the aviation assets that we have on our fire here, Taylor Creek, are now automatically assigned to the Klavanek fire. The assets that they have, some will stay behind. It's not a clearing house where they're gonna take everything down to Natchez. The Klavanek fire is a very, very high pr priority. This Selma corridor, the I-99 Wonder, this is a very high priority. So we, our resources are increasing. As Damon said, the Structure Protection Task Force that's working up here as we tie fire into the Galise Creek Road and Teller Creek Road, that's more mop-up mode. And as we hold the fire on the Bear Camp Road today, they should be able to adjust down. <clears throat> okay, so the highlights again. The evacuation in the Pickett Creek area. A lot of folks were wondering why it took a little while. There had to be snagging and some other safety issues mitigated before the sheriff would decrease it. That happened yesterday. So congratulations, everybody in Pickett Creek. We know that's been stressful. We're happy for you for sure. The fire's being mopped up in this area. The hot shots working with the drone that can see through the air and drop in little extra pieces of fire to help them complete their puzzle. That's beginning and underway. Remember, we have black line, containment line all the way around. I know for the folks, the community meeting last night in Selma, the maps didn't include the Taylor Creek fire containment numbers. This is what's certain. We have black cold line all the way around and the National Guard crews are busily mopping that up for us. We have six 20 person crews, uh, soldiers and airmen from the Oregon National Guard and we're darn proud to have them here and they're doing fantastic work. The firefight today continues to be in Bear Camp Road. This fire has been backing down slowly. We've been brushing and clearing and chipping the Bear Camp Road for days now. We have a spike camp out here of resources, hundreds of resources that don't drive all the way back in tonight or any night that waste time. They stay out there so they can work hard, rest right there. They're out in the line all night. They're going to be out in the line all day. Remember, as they light off that valley bottom, it's dangerous, but if a fire gets a little bit uh, moving up the hill, it will go right into the black because those low burning ground fires from that video we've been showing you the last couple of days and those aerial photography shots, it takes all the energy out of that mountain. It won't be able to rip back up into a green forest, curl over with a ridgetop wind and spot north. So that's why we've been doing this very methodically, very patiently. The inversion cap has been helping us a lot because those low backing fires take the energy out of an uphill run that then spots north. As our incident commander said uh, last night, Chris Schulte, and as our ops chief, Barry Schullenberger said, if this fire is to pooch across the valley, what we call slop over or try to get established across the valley. As Chris says, we're gonna push it back down. We wanna keep it here. Our, it's a moderate uh, opportunity for us. It's not a high probability of success. It's a moderate because valleys are never an ideal place to fight fire. But the backup plan is the, bear, the pea vine road, which is a much more advantageous. But we've been working really hard to get this done. Firefighters yesterday brought fire further down Chrome Ridge Road. And that means that this won't be able to hook around us. So that's the Medford 10 crew, that great back crew. Our local crews here have been working extremely hard coming down this road. They've been pacing and timing with the aerial supervisor called Air Attack, or the drone in this case, because Air Attack can't always fly in the smoke, but the drone can. So what the Scan Eagle drone has been doing is flying the perimeter, helping them identify hot spots, seeing through the smoke, and letting the fire crews know their progress. And they have, the drone operators have direct communication with the ground resources so they know what they're doing. It gives them a lot of confidence to be out there with the Scan Eagle. Thank you drone operators, we really appreciate it. That uh, drone can fly eight hours on just a few gallons of gas. Seven foot wingspan, it's one of the greatest new technologies we have. The soldier camp area, soldier point area up here has been filled in, we're working on holding that. Okay, so just to make sure everybody understands, we're gonna have, still have two camps. These are two separate fires. We're hoping to contain them both on their own and not necessarily combine them together. I know a lot of folks are uncertain what's going to happen in here. There's a 2014 fire scar. You haven't seen this perimeter move in days. In fact, this is episode 9 of 14, right? We've been doing this now for nine days. This perimeter hasn't moved since I got here. This is hitting an old fire scar. There's a lot of burn history around here, as you know. There's been some awful fires around here. But in this case, having a burn scar right here is a very nice asset. That Onion Mountain area. We're gonna definitely protect around these structures, no question. We're gonna to try to link up and hang up the fire wherever we can. We're gonna use all the different tools we have in our toolbox to keep it low intensity. 
That's a combination of smart ground firefighting, smart aerial firefighting, and we'll continue to work that. What we do know is that fire is being brought up to this point so we can deepen that buffer. So there'll be a camp like we have right now here in Merlin, and there'll be a camp like they have right now down in Selma. And that way the folks who are also gonna be working on buffering the southern line, structure protection and prepping down here, looking at opportunities as to how we can start cooling off some of these edges to prevent it from building up a lot of energy, which is the key for us right now, is to use our technology to look at some of the heat signatures and keep some of that energy out there. We don't wanna see extreme fire behavior. We don't want this to get up and run. And as long as we have the inversion cap and use all our tools, we should be in good shape. So two camps, resources shifting to both places, one management team, more efficiency, it's safer for us, we get to focus and do what we want to do, which is protect your homes. One phone number, the joint information number for both fires, 541-474-5305. And let's talk about watch out number six. Be alert, keep calm, think clearly, act decisively. For those of you who have been following this series, and we're glad you've been with us all week, this morning we came into our set and the light above our primary set over to my right was blinking like high school lights do when they start to fail. We had to be calm, recreate this new set here so if it looks a little bit different, if things are out of place, I thank Damon and Jake behind the camera there for helping me. That's what we do as firefighters. We're always prepared to be calm, think clearly, and act decisively. Thank you. We appreciate you. Let us know how we can serve you. And welcome aboard, Klondike folks. We're really looking forward to serving you the best we can. Let us know how we can do that. Thanks.